Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 470 at scavengerlife.com. Our business would not exist if not for the great abundance in the United States of America. Yes. Or the great waste. Is it trash or is it treasure? Those things. You know, we could not live like we do from our eBay business if other Americans didn't buy and get rid of perfectly good items. Yep. You know? I mean, we have scavenged and lived a little bit in Europe. We've been to other countries and I just don't see the level of abundance waste however you want to see it. Like not once in Europe had I ever seen putting put it, people putting stuff on the curb. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not I mean, once. In a perfect world, Americans would, would, wouldn't would waste and then we'd just be out of business, you know. And honestly, I would be okay with that, you know. I value <laughs> I, I efficiency over waste. Yeah. And, you know, if one... Um, One thing that happens from this podcast, if we can even just be a little bit a part of Mm -hmm. people in the United States not wasting so much, I would be so happy, you know, and I would love for whether or not people care or not hearing this podcast, if you are going out there scavenging and selling online, you're helping with that change, you know, Yep, Um, that's awesome. That being said... Uh, I did want to go over because, you know, we are in this pandemic. It seems like the second wave has come and, uh, if the first one even ended, yeah, I don't the know. Second so wave everyone's the stuck inside, wave. a lot of people unemployed and there might be people who are coming to this podcast new wanting to start selling on eBay. So I thought I would maybe talk about how we would start an eBay store today, mm. knowing what we know now. Oh, I'm so interested to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we started in 2008. Yeah. When it was just a different world. There weren't all the videos on a YouTube. Yeah, it not was yet. like a much different vibe. You know, some people will say, well, they started in 1999 when it was even more different from that. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, but here we are, 2020. What would we do? So, number one, we would first sell our own stuff. Yes. Hands down, Start I bet all stuff. most people hearing this could probably go through their house and their garage and people have storage, you know, places yeah. where they pay extra. Yeah. Just start selling stuff you have not touched in six months. I bet you could buy a new car based on that. <laughs> uh, Maybe. Send your kids to college based on the stuff that you have, you know. And yep. there's no judgment. It's just a reality. We just live in a very wealthy country and things are cheap and people buy stuff. So sell your own stuff. Yeah, get rid of it. Yeah, the uh, risk is really low. Yeah. Um, and then go and buy some stuff out there, you know. Just go scavenging. And my thing is this. Trust your judgment, you know, don't other people online might say, you know, find this stuff. Here's a bolo. Be (laughs) on the lookout for, you know, arcade games, that kind of stuff. Just go out there and trust your judgment because part of this is you want to find out what your scavenging personality is. Right. You know, are you into like shoes? Are you into, you know, comic books? Well, the the other part about that, too, is. You trust your own judgment, but your judgment will change quickly and it changes really fast and it can't, you know, the possibility of it changing is, is quick. Um, you know, you're like, oh, that thing is not selling. So, but this thing did. So let me keep looking for that, you know? Right. And so if you go out there and just trust your judgment and trust me on this, trust your judgment, bring home some stuff. And then research it yep. and look it up online. eBay is one of the best sites in my mind because they actually let you see the sold. history of sold. With prices. Amazon doesn't do that. Etsy doesn't do Etsy it. Etsy doesn't do that. You can see that. what's sold, but you can't see the prices. Other places. I know that there are ways to find out prices. Yeah, I, yeah. I get it. But eBay is really nice. It's very transparent. It's that right way. there. So yeah. you can just be like, oh, I thought this thing was cool. It's actually not a worth a whole lot, and nobody buy these things. All right, so I just learned something. Oh, I, I thought this thing was cool. Well, 
Well, other people think it's cool too. And they pay a lot of money for it. You know? And then learn to take photos, you know? And take multiple photos. (laughs) It seems so simple. Yeah. However, there's so many people on eBay that. Yeah, I mean, and really look at your photos and be like, does this look. Like, good photos? Is yeah. It, Would I want to buy this yeah. on eBay? Like, I don't think anyone needs to have lights, in my opinion, if yeah, you right. have decent sunlight. Natural a, light. A natural Not direct room. sunlight, but right. like... And, then, you know, just don't take it, like, on a dirty towel or whatever. Just <laughs> put it on, like, a wood table or just on just a clean surface. Right. Don't, don't like, throw it on your bed and take a photo with, like, do your dirty underwear next to it. I mean, I've Which, literally seen yeah. that. So so have some um, pride in what you're doing. Yeah. And then put that on eBay and see if anyone buys it. You yeah. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're building your processes. Right. You're, you're building a system. And that's really the big thing. You know, and our advice is to scavenge what you enjoy because for us, yeah. if you don't enjoy this, yeah. then you won't keep doing it. Yeah. You know? You have to find things that you're like, this is so interesting. I love the research. I love it when it sells. Right. You know, it, and that's different for everybody. Yeah. And... And honestly, selling one item on eBay is really easy, you know? Yeah. You photograph it, you put it up, you wait for someone to buy it, you ship it. I mean, this is what made us all think we could run a business. (laughs) The challenge is building that pipeline. Right. Building that infrastructure. Yeah. And doing it every day. Where are you going to store all this stuff? You know, after you have like 20 items, it's kind of too much just to put in the corner. Like, where are you going to put this? Yeah. How are you going to organize it? Are you going to inventory it? Right. And please answer that question early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Not how 10 do you, years in. How do you set up your accounting? Because this right. isn't... If you're selling your own stuff, I don't know. I think that there's this, like, this gray area where if you're selling your own stuff, then you don't have to. It's not profit or whatever. But once you start going out there and you're like scavenging and that's selling a and you're making a profit, I mean, that's a business and you know people start to walk that fine line between like undeclared income and blah 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 yeah so you just want to make sure you start doing your accounting earlier than later well just so you don't get caught with a 1099 in the mail right and also like if you don't keep track of your expenses starting from the beginning which in the beginning of of my early businesses i wasn't good at and i had a huge like you know, wine box full of receipts and it was a nightmare at the end of the year. So just start that early. Right. And I think the pitfalls are this. So when we started, there was no one online to tell us what we were doing wrong. Right. Like there weren't really a lot of examples online. There was eBay forums, which again is the dark pits of despair where everyone's (laughs) like how bad eBay is but they still do it. Yeah, we yeah. stayed away from them. But there weren't really examples online. Nowadays, man, you just go on reselling. There's like yeah. all these people online showing you how to sell. And these yeah. are sales. They show you incredible numbers. And like they're selling so much stuff. And, and there are so many platforms too. So people are like specializing in right. Poshmark and Mercari. And they're killing it. And they're selling on all the platforms, <laughs> all the platforms. at the same time. And they're yeah. doing wholesale. And they're spending a lot of money up front. And they're they're kind of gambling with all this. and But they're not really showing what it takes to hit those numbers. Right. Really? I mean, I don't know. I just, I feel like they kind of over, they kind of brush over a lot Mm -hmm. of things. So then you have people, they are trying to find shortcuts by investing in courses and in mystery boxes or they're, you know, (laughs) spending a lot of money on their credit cards, buying wholesale, you know, they're like trying to go straight to the crack cocaine where they want to like, I'm making nothing now. I want to make ten thousand dollars tomorrow. Crack cocaine. Um, yeah. The high. Yeah, the high. Chase the high. Um, so that's actually kind of why we started our podcast because we wanted to find other people and share with other people. We're like, this is how we did it, and it it it's these steps. What you're talking about, and um, that's it. Like, there's no secret. There's no course you need to take. Like, you just have to get to work. Well, I and mean, do it. I mean. It took us two years 
yeah. to start making enough money on eBay to pay our monthly bills, like all of our monthly bills. Yeah. Two years. Like, yeah, it this took is, a while. There are, there are probably people turning off this podcast right now. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I need to make it now. Uh, yep, I know. It's not easy. The good thing is, so if you've actually stuck w- w- with this podcast, if once you do sell enough on eBay in a month to pay all of your bills, most likely you'll be like us where you'll be able to do it the next month right. and the next month and the next month because by that time we had built a rock solid process. Yeah. You know, where we were would go out and scavenge and there was a process to get it, you know, photographed and put online and stored and shipped. Yeah. It was easy. It wasn't quick money. Right. It was like solid and it's like climbing a mountain and we immediately repeated that each week yeah until now i mean every I mean, day i can't remember a week or a month well i can't remember a month where we didn't make enough to pay our yeah. monthly bills right. from ebay right um you know it fluctuates so but you know we're, we're, we're definitely not making a million dollars <laughs> yeah but we're making enough and for us that's good enough, and that's what our our goal was. Yeah, to buy our time, you know, um, and stay interested in what we were doing. Yeah, like, it's 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 not. Sometimes it feels like a grind. Like there are times where it feels like that, but it's so rare that um, you know you we've been able to be like, look at this weird box of stuff. Like you know, enough times. Yeah. To I mean, keep it interesting. And this is not to say there aren't many ways to sell. I mean, yeah. some people really like that kind of like high octane. Yeah. Like who wants to be a millionaire kind of. And consistency. In sev- that's, in, in, that's fine. In what they're selling. Sure. We value su- sustainability, repeatability, and stability. We're like the index funds of eBay selling. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's a good way to um, put it. Other advice to me often sounds like big a Wall Street bets, yeah. where you might be able to make a lot of money, but maybe you'll be stuck with a bunch of stuff you can't sell that you paid a lot for, yeah. And then it like saps your resources, saps your energy, saps your confidence, yeah. You know? So it's really we're just trying to offer a different option, right? Um, and for us. Also, it's all about low cost because we don't pay a lot for our inventory. We have always been able to afford to make many, many mistakes. Yeah, sure. I mean, I can't remember the last time we bought something that really like hurt us. Yeah, I can't. You know? I, I can't. I mean, I feel like I can't even think of an example like, of that. We've never spent so much on something where we're like, we just spent all of our money. I can't believe it. And we can't sell this thing. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, we just, and, and that's great. You know, I mean, I, I'm thinking back if we had made a big bet early where we had like bought, you know, a big pallet of right cameras or something. Yeah. And then they were all broken or we couldn't sell them or something. We would have, we probably wouldn't like, be this here is today. Horrible. Yeah. Um, you know, it would wipe out our momentum and make us question our ability. Sure. Yeah. But lots of little successes on like. You know, random miscellaneous, yeah, <laughs> weird I mean, stuff. We're here twelve years later because we've had thousands and thousands of little tiny yeah. successes. Yeah, you know, and right. that's why every week when we share our uh, numbers, we celebrate those like really satisfying <laughs> sales. You yeah. know, like this I'm week, sure we'll we, talk about it. Yeah, we yeah. sold is like a little like shelf. That shelf for thirty dollars. <laughs> Who cares? Big deal. You know what? This came in a, a table box. lot. We got most people would have just thrown it away. But I was like, this is very satisfying. Kind of cool. Yeah. Somebody wanted it. I listed it a couple days ago. Thirty bucks, and that you know pays our our phone bill. F- yeah. for, for the month. So right. that's exciting to us. Yeah. So you know if you're. New to all this, welcome. Don't believe the hype, <laughs> is what we're saying, right? <laughs> like, we really, if you're one of those people who needs encouragement of like, it's okay to think of this as a marathon. Right. And that it's a long game. Yeah. Good, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
it's you found the right it's, place. It becomes sustainable yeah. that way. And the people who have heard us talk about this a million times, I mean, hopefully it just reinforces like they can think back to them starting and where they are now and that they can feel proud that they've built this pipeline. Yeah. That they're now continuing to take, they make enough money month after month to, you know, we, we all have priorities. You know, some people are doing it to send their kids to school, to, you know, pay for their car. I mean, just, yep. again, you don't need to make a million dollars to feel good about what you're doing. Yeah. You know. Don't um, let anybody... <laughs> make you think otherwise now specifically on ebay this week um we we're talking on the forum about um someone was asking like these days do you really need to have super long titles oh, with like every character you every character you use and the words aren't really kind of human readable it's just like a bunch of sh- search terms like I, yeah is it isn't it just better? And I think this person made an example of he or she was checking out the like the most popular item that sold in a certain category, and they're like, "It's it's actually the item that has the, the shortest title stylish. because it's like really human readable." I have opinions. Go. I try. So I try to use every character, but I try to make it human readable. I, I mean, I I definitely try to put as many keywords that people might be searching for. Um, sometimes I put measurements up there if it's a, you know, a vase and you're like, this vase is 24 inches. It's quite big. You're like, yeah, put it in the title. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, my personal opinion is I like to have as many keywords as I can. And actually a little side note, there was an example on the podcast, uh, on the forum, um, where people were talking about movie prop titles for movie props. And some people were saying, oh, put movie prop in the title. And there's actually a person, Debit and Credits, who we talked about last week too, who works in the film and TV prop industry. And he said, actually, you don't need to do that. You just need to have like very rich titles. You know, 1970s Hollywood Regency lamp, gold, you know, that's what they're looking for. I need a gold 70s lamp, you know. So to me, having those very descriptive words, someone might be searching just gold lamp. They might be searching Hollywood Regency. They might be searching 70s lamp. It's like, I want all possibilities. So that's my opinion. So how many... Characters is allowed in it's title. 80. 80. Yep. And so the idea is you, you, you're trying to do two things here, and there's, I guess, a fine line, and it can get crossed either way. Yeah. Number one, the title needs to be understandable by a human. Right. So if I'm searching online for something and, and I'm reading titles, like the title needs to like explain to me what, what it is. is. Uh, the other thing, though, is that the title needs to have enough keywords so it can be found in search right. by the eBay search engine or the Google search engine, you know, and the more keywords you have in there, the more chance you're going to pop up in a search. Now, I think title title has a heavier search weight than item specifics and description, but you should put other information in there as well. Like item specifics are are really important as eBay has noted and the description, um, you know, we don't put long descriptions, but like we were talking with about ephemera, if there's a name and a location and a couple family names that won't fit in the title, put it in the description and Google and eBay pick that up. Like I'll give you an example where we're going to open up a coffee shop in our town. Yeah. And I'm looking online to see if we want to buy a used espresso, uh, it's machine, right. which is questionable choice. I'm not sure if we're going <laughs> to do that thinking? because they get, you know, a work to hell and yeah. might not be able to a rebuild. But here's an example. So I have this snipe out and the guy has a title, Espresso Machine Commercial. Just three words. He doesn't have the, the brand, the brand, the model, the, the age, yeah. just uh, is it two group? Is it three group? He did. He doesn't have any of that right. stuff. And so why would I? You're like I'm not even gonna look. Well, we yeah. probably would look at it because we're scavengers. The only reason why I found it is because I'm scouring every, every. single one in here 
but I bet if I search for it, it wouldn't really pop up very high in the search. Especially if you're so, looking for a specific brand. So it's human readable and it's very, you know, like, okay, it's a commercial espresso. Yeah, I mean, fine. But it's not telling me much more and it's also not telling the Yeah, the, the search engine much more. So, yeah, so. Yeah. So I would say that's going over the, the line by not putting enough inf- not enough info. information in there. yeah yeah so that's our opinion <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so our numbers this week uh we actually made twice as much as last week it felt like it too right you're like we sold how did it feel how did it feel I, I, I don't even ask you like, medium <laughs> we sold 56 items yeah which for us i was, was packing a lot is a lot, you yeah. know. Um, I packed 10 things on, like... And we grossed, everything. not including shipping costs, because we don't include that, uh, $2,286. What? 33 cents. Yeah. So, What and, the heck did we say? I feel like I was in a daze. I'm just right. like... Because I wouldn't have guessed that number. Yeah. Um, you I was know, just packing, like... Packing, Good. not paying attention, packing, <laughs> just doing my job. Yeah. That, little that, worker bee. That uh, process, the uh, pipeline, right? Yeah. You know? Um, what made us, m- m- you know, money this week? So we sold an Oculus Go. We sold an Oculus Go. Which... For $175. Okay, that that yeah. was a good sale. I And that was our own. I wanted to try out, uh, yeah. what, what's it called? 3D? Uh, VR. VR. Well, we were doing a job for about VR, a video job about VR, so we got it. And uh, the Oculus Go is a, like a lower version of VR. and um, It's like a consumer version. It's pretty. I it's mean, okay. I, I think the thing was is there just a, hadn't been a lot to enjoy, so yeah. it wasn't that interesting. I, I feel like people keep trying to make VR work, and it's just not there yet, or at least... The way I've experienced it. Yeah. So, but anyway, we we sold it because you know why? I haven't touched it in like a year, so it was on our shelf. It. it was getting dusty, yeah. and we were like, "Look, of all the times, you got to sell this now because people are at home. Right. They're experimenting with because video, especially so. with uh, electronics, if you don't sell it yeah. soon enough, it's not worth anything. Or you have to hold on and to it for a couple of decades until it's a vintage <laughs> that's item. what you so said you're like lower the sell price it quick or sell it yeah yeah uh, we sold a sink faucet for 85 dollars. not exciting but i had a sick. much higher price on it It was a fancy like german brand we bought it we bought it used and we were going to use it in one of our rentals and we were like oh this isn't gonna fit the you know right. sink we have we sold another uh pair of curtains Expensive um, curtains. The ones we've talked down. about before. We bought like a bunch. We don't do this very often. We bought a retail arbitrage. Yeah. We bought these packs of nice wool thick mm. curtains for They're $30. They're cotton, cotton and linen. They're made out of gold. $30. <laughs> and we've been selling them over 100 120 150 yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the things that are satisfying. That made us money, but they're emotionally satisfying that help us do this week after week yep old magazines oh my god old i sold a couple lots of old magazines love it we talked about this before for our vacation rentals i like to buy magazine subscriptions because i think it's cool when you're on vacation just a little flip through cool magazines design magazines and you know i get the magazine subscriptions at a discount because if you just type like coupon magazine they're like 10 bucks we sold one lot for fifteen dollars and one lot for thirty dollars. So, so what awesome. do you do? Like, yeah. you just made money. And you used it. We sold two, not small rugs, but smallish rugs for a hundred dollars. They're two by three. And they were They're pretty small, junky, but they were decent. They were they were handmade, like hand hooked or whatever. We've had them for so long. Yeah. But that was satisfying just get it off because the shelf. when you sell full-time like we do and like a lot of you do in your storage when something comes off of the shelf that has been taking up a lot of space you're like yes good. vase we sold a vase for 115 dollars. yeah that was a very nice sale that's a great sale it was not fun to pack as i said it was 24 inches tall how'd you pack it so what i did was i for some reason, we have a ton of packing material. I think it's because 
we're ordering a lot of stuff on Amazon for our businesses right now. Not a ton of stuff, but Amazon's crazy. You order one little thing and it's got like bubble wrap all over it. So I have a ton of that stuff. So I did the bubble wrap. I had these like sheets of like fat bubble wrap, which I buy anyway. But so it was like bubble wrapped and then I wrapped it in cardboard, like cardboard shell. And then I got a big box and I did peanuts and like a combination of like that blank newsprint paper and other boxes. Mm-hmm. Boom, 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 boom. And then <laughs> and then you shut it all up and you kind of shake it and make sure it's not moving. And I shipped it with insurance, obviously. How long does something like that take to to, to ship? That one was pretty easy, actually. It was just big, but it wasn't complicated. It was just like, this is how it has to be done. I don't know, like 15 minutes. Really? That's that's fast. Yeah. I would think like it would take an hour. Oh, God, no. If it took me an hour, I'd be like, (laughs) I need a super like handling, (laughs) handling fee, but... Some some things I do have handling fees on where I'm like, Ugh, that thing's going to be complicated. But the, you know, there was this um, this hat, this like straw hat, this vintage straw hat that came with a hat box. You're like, what year is that from? Um, and the funny thing was, it, it was a round box and it was 14 inches. And I'm like, I do not have a good box for this because it was 14 inches by like six inches. And you're like, ugh. So I actually like made a box for that. That took longer. So how often yeah. are you having to customize a box to make a, a couple box? times a week? Yeah. And for anyone that doesn't know this, from what I understand is you take like a regular box yeah. and you take what like a cutting tool. Yeah, it's called you- a carton sizer. You can do that or you can just like for this this hat box thing because you don't want the box to just be in a poly mailer because she's buying the hat with the box so what i did was i took another basically you use a cardboard box as raw material and you wrap it as much as you can and then you take the um like a razor blade or a box cutter and you kind of like slice it and kind of fold them in and tape it and you just like form a box out of a box yeah it's not hard it's just you want to do it so it's not like all these crazy angles because then you're like, now I need to like wrap it in a poly mailer so it like stays sturdy. And it's fine, but it's time consuming. I mean, I will say, I've said it before, if you did not enjoy <laughs> or were good at packing, yeah, we'd be we would not have an eBay business. I know, we couldn't. Yeah. You have to. I mean, you have to. Or else, yeah. I mean, you can hate packing. Like, look, I looked at that hat box and I was like... Oh, oh God! Okay. If, if you were dead, <laughs> if I died, and I decided to keep on doing, the you'd business, have to hire someone. I would basically just be going to mailbox, etc. That'd be just so saying, expensive. Ship this for me. Oh God! <laughs> I would be like no, the old no. man. Look, yeah. The the first time you got the bill for that box, you'd figure it out. <laughs> I enjoy it. Yeah. I like packing stuff. I like sending stuff. I always have. I've always been a mail post office nerd. Good. I just does, like does anything scare you to the ship where you're just like, I just I, I can't do this. Nope. Nope. Things that are like big and delicate, like that 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 vase wasn't bad because it had like it has like a uniform shape. It's basically rectangle. You're like it's a rectangle. Right. When things are weird shaped where like we've had a couple lamps where it's like a lamp with like a big metal thing that's an L shape. I'm like, the God, like, (laughs) how do I make this make sense? You know, it's the weird shapes and it's not scared. You're just like, but I would say, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. In so this week we sold 56 items. Yeah. What did you say? Six items were not tough even to that. pack. Not even okay. that. Yeah. So a majority of our items are like are three. Very simple to. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, like poly mailers. Po- or- oh God, I live. I live on poly mailers because poly mailers, little uh, uh, bubble mailers. Like I ship so much first class stuff in mm-hmm. there. Uh, we sold a lot of random funky clothes this week. A lot of people in Florida and Texas buying clothes online. I don't know mm-hmm. what that says, but. Um, 
So that's poly, you know, you like wrap it up in a plastic bag or some newsprint and you throw it in a poly mailer and it's done. It takes yep. two seconds. It's great. So one final thing that was satisfying, but also you could tell us how it got shipped. We yep. sold a beaded curtain. Yes. We, we've had this for a long time. It's, it's like, like a hippie. 70s, you know, it's like you put it in the doorway and there's like little beads. <laughs> when I got that this at an auction, I just thought it was a slam dunk. It was going to sell like immediately. Well, it sold for $120. Right. But it's probably taken two years. A year and a half or something. Uh, although, I guess people would say, we'll sell it for $20. Sell, sell it sell for fast. cheaper. I don't want to sell for $20. I want $120. Those are expensive. But it, it it's satisfying because it was on the top shelf. I can see it right now. It's now gone. I took like four things off that shelf this week. It was great. You're right. The, the, those rugs. Those rugs and, were up there. How did you things. ship that? So the thing about... So a beaded curtain, has it has this like wooden square rod so what you the way it was stored was we rolled the beads up on the rod so it's like a thick thing of beads it's a little wonky like it's not great i put that in like a you know like a 50 gallon trash bag or whatever just to keep it in place and then so i am admittedly as you know a box hoarder anytime i see a weird shape big i'm sure steven schultz is like yep Weird, big shape, long box, something for artwork. Because if you don't have that and you're like, right. here's this big piece of artwork that's got glass, you're like, Ugh. Yeah. then you're customizing a box. Right. I had something came in an Amazon box. I think it was like track lighting for one of the businesses. It was this long rectangular box. And I, you know, padded the bottom with that like newsprint paper and I threw it in there. And it was just going to like a couple cities over in Virginia. So I was like, this is going to get there pretty fast. And that was it. Yep. It was just like big box. Boom. Right. Because we have these uh, steel shelves in our, we have like a little warehouse behind our house. Yeah. I don't know if that's the right word. I, it's it's like a warehouse. A warehouse. Yeah. It's a mini warehouse. And we have these steel shelves that go throughout the building. And then on top is where we store all, all of our boxes. boxes. Now, do you... Have you ever not found the right size box or do we just always have a weird shape box? Uh, yeah, there have been times where I'm like, Ugh, I don't really, well, the hat box. Right. I was like, I don't really have anything that fits this the way I want it to snugly. So I'm just going to make it out of something else. That's the solution. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't, I can't remember when we bought a box. I mean. We either get them from eBay, Right. Because yeah, we, we order boxes, them off eBay, right, yeah. From our Smaller boxes, yeah, yeah. The coupon. Or it's just boxes, yeah, that just we order stuff, it comes, we find them in town. At auctions, they yeah, they auctions. always have a b- billion boxes because people have to pack glass. I mean, we uh, used to go to Walmart every couple yeah. of weeks in the evening, like at nighttime. When they're restocking. When they're restocking and, they, they're, and they're like, help yourself. Just take boxes. We haven't done that in years. Why not? Not years, but yeah, maybe it has been years. Why don't we do that? Uh, I just think we've been able to gather. There's a couple um, grocery, like grocery store outlets that we go to where you pack. It's not Costco, but there's another place, and they have proper boxes that like shut and stuff. And we just like always, you know, I always have right. stuff from there. Um, auctions. Because I hoard it so much. You know, mm. I do put a lot of stuff in poly mailers. So right. sometimes our... That's it. Yeah. So sometimes our, our boxes look insane. Right now they look kind of insane because I haven't been like breaking them down. I just like throw them on there. Because I use them so often that All I'm right. like, I'll just grab it. But um, yeah, I mean, we've hoarded enough. And when it's eBay um, shipping supply coupon comes out, I just buy stuff and put it up there. Even if I'm not like I use this every day, I'm like I don't. I'll need that box eventually. Those yeah. boxes eventually. So I kind of hoard that stuff. Cool. Just like you know yeah. the way we scavenge. I'm like I just scavenge it. I'll we'll take a walk in our neighborhood and I'll find a box that blew out of someone's trash and I'll bring it home. That's a great box. Let's bring it home. That's my girl. <laughs> it's in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, scavenge of the week. So um, yeah, we bought a big pine harvest table this thing is like it's a farm like it's bigger than a farm table it's a it's a a mega it's a harvest table it's nine feet by a little over three feet wide uh so it's huge and we're excited about it because it's going to go in this coffee shop we're going to open yep um 
old pine wood. It's made out of three wide pine boards. The top is the biggest one is 16 inches wide, which anyone who's a wood nerd yeah. knows that's old wood. You know, they don't, they're just are not pines that are that big anymore not because anymore. We, we cut all that stuff down. So, you know, this is old kind of pine and I've been uh, sanding it. Well, the top, talk about why you sanded it. Right, because the top, I mean, is just like, I guess it's that thing in the 60s or 70s where people just gooped poly on it where it almost looks like plastic. It was almost like this thick varnish. Yeah, and it's fine. It's it, shiny. It was, I guess, a look at one point, you yeah. know. So I've been sanding with a belt sander all that goop off. Yeah. Just to get down to the raw wood. And it just looks so it good. Looks so good. And then we'll just put some like a paste wax on it or something. No, it was a little bit expensive, but... How much was it? It was $600. $600. Now, I will say this. When we first got our house and we wanted a farm table for our kitchen with two matching benches, and we were like, we really want this. We found one at an antique store. And it was a thousand dollars. It was nine hundred something, yeah. and we bought it because we were like, "This is our work table." Like we're yeah. gonna tables are expensive. Tables, especially old tables like that. So when you see one, and it's funny because that was on our list of like in quotes equipment and furniture we needed for our the cafe, and there it was at an auction, and we were like, "Yep." Put a high price on it because yeah, that's I mean, six hundred dollars is cheap for nine feet long. Like again. Tables. I think are, twelve people can sit at it. Twelve. I mean, uh, tables are expensive, especially if you go, you know buy them like antique stores or whatever. So I'm I'm psyched about mm-hmm. that. Um, but I will say we're talking about this some on the forum that um, you know the virus is still here and it's coming here and it's like sprouting up in uh, again in certain states that kind of have pass it by uh we're still as far as scavenging goes still very wary of i haven't gone to how a store. we scavenge like uh we have been doing some online auctions where we if you just pick up yeah and everyone's it's not masks. an in-person auction i'm not in a group of people i would just I, and you know like whatever your politics are and whatever you think i don't know uh for me it's not worth scavenging if I, if I could get sick, because if we start getting sick, that's going to hurt our business. I mean, even just for a pure business right. sense, getting sick is not good for business. Right. Uh, and so now is the time for us to be careful. So, yeah. I mean, everyone has to, you know, judge the kind of uh, vectors you're willing yeah. to risk. Um, I know a lot of people have been going to a yard sales, but I guess if they're outside, outside and you're, you're having a mask sure, and you're sure. kind of distancing, but, but really, really just, or... just be careful. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's my PSA. Shop on eBay. Yeah. Buy bulk lots from people on eBay <laughs> Yeah, and just have it shipped to your house. Or, or, I, or I know people, some people have been doing, uh, Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace. Pick so stuff you, up. Yeah, we've sold a couple things on Facebook uh, Marketplace, and we just put it in our... In our driveway. So it's great, because you put it in your driveway. You, I mean, it's nice enough and not raining that you can do that. And you kind of, like, wave at people. You're like, here it is. Here, there's a little Tupperware thing. They put their money in it, and you're like, okay, bye. Yep. I put the money... <laughs> I let the money sit there for a week, and then I spray it with alcohol. <laughs> I think it's a little much, but yeah. whatever. Hey, I, again, we, we all have to like pick how <laughs> safe we want to be. Customer issues, thank, thankfully, after we kind of had a run of returns and kind yeah. of grumpy buyers, we've been fine been the past okay week. Been okay so uh, far. I mean, that again, that's for anyone brand new to tell this. We kind of talked about what we would do. I mean... The thing that has not changed is customer service or dealing with people. Yeah. Like, uh, that is just part and parcel of being a seller online is you're going to get grumpy buyers who make your life hell, but you just have to be willing to look past the drama and think of the big picture and not blow your business up because of someone trying to... Who's being nutso. Yeah, like some... Sometimes it's better to just give them money or give them a refund and just keep going, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. We have a friend 
who is a definite scavenger. Like I was just he, about to say He this. doesn't sell online. Yeah. But he's like a Craigslist scavenger. Anytime I list yeah. anything on Craigslist, right. he texts right. me, oh, you spelled that wrong. Right. I'm like, he's get a, out of my face. He's a Facebook scavenger. <laughs> he's got like two big kind of like pole, pole barns. barns behind his house. So he's always... You know, hoarding wood, like, and he. But he does just, stuff with. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's a super smart guy. Like I mean, he builds stuff. He built a beautiful a, workshop. Uh, you know, and he's our age. Uh, yeah. I I talked to him the other day. I I was like, why don't you sell some stuff on eBay? Like you have like such you a good find eye. amazing yeah, stuff. He's he's like he's and he's a great bargainer. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, I'll never sell on that site again. And I asked him why. He said he tried selling like a clock. A clock, okay. The, when he bought his house, it, it had a bunch of stuff in it, and yeah. it was a cool clock. He sold it to a guy in California, and he right. shipped it. Right. And the guy in California got it and said it was broken. Right. And what our friend did was, he says, well, it's got insurance on it. Just call the post office. And the buyer said, I don't want to call the post office. I don't want to deal with you it. You call the post yeah. office. You sold it to me. You make me whole. And yeah. my friend, our friend... You know, whether or not it's true or not, got very upset, thought the guy was scamming him, ignored it. Ignored it, yeah. eBay gave the buyer all of his money and let him keep the clock. Of course. My, our friend decided to cancel his PayPal account and not pay so pay, so they couldn't take the money out of his account. <laughs> PayPal sent him to collections agency <laughs> and then he had to fight with the collections agency and then he felt good because he only paid like half of it or something. I mean... But he's like, oh, I'll never do that again. It's a scam. And I, I, I didn't really tell him. Just he, 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 he had not been in the right state of mind to hear some feedback. But the real answer is this. If a buyer says something is broken and if right. you have insurance, you as a seller, right. you give the buyer their money and right. then you make the claim and the post office pays you. And this, you deal with it. Because you're the one that, that pulled the insurance claim. Right. Buyer's happy, you get money, it's your business, like that's how it goes. Yeah. But that story with our friend is so common on eBay. It's so typical. And I understand. Look, I have had buyers in the last couple months just be totally ridiculous. And you're just like, this is, this is, is this worth it? Right. But then you're like, it's only like 4% ever of of buyers who right. act like this all my other buyers are awesome yeah so yeah but it's the perfect example of a scavenger that you're like man you would make a killing on you do so well right. yeah you know but he doesn't really like people He's just like i don't want to so. talk to people <laughs> they're annoying yeah. Yeah. yeah i get it uh okay things we learned in the forum we've talked about some of the things one thing someone was saying that um they really wish ebay was as simple as Poshmark. Mm. Uh, there was like a conversation about how RV, was it WRV Treasures? Um, WV Treasures. Yeah. Um, he's teaching his daughter how to sell yes. on eBay, like take photos for him. And he was kind of explaining the process. And someone was saying that they wished it could be easier. Because, yeah. you know, it is a lot of steps. Yeah. And they're saying, like, Poshmark is so easy. Yeah. Take a look, picture. Look, Facebook is that, so You know, easy. whatever. And, then, and look, I get it. There are more competitors coming up for eBay and Amazon. You yeah. Know? And Poshmark is one of those things. My thing is this. Poshmark is not a real company. Yep. It is a subsidized yep. startup. Venture capital. By venture capital money. Yep. And... It's kind of like, remember when Etsy was was not a real, I mean, it yeah. was like this private business. I mean, yeah. it's a real company, but it's right. like private. It's not having to make a profit. Yep. It's subsidized. And it, it, Etsy was so easy and yep. people would say how cheap it was, no fees. And then Etsy went public and now it becomes a real business. Yeah. It's got to make money every single quarter. Yeah. They raise prices. It's not, I don't think, as easy anymore. Yep. You know? There's more information you need as a seller to put on your listing. Because once a company has to start to make a profit, then it has to have a rules on selling. And that's where all the little rules yep. start popping up, you know? Yep. Uh, so well, I just want to yeah. add to that because, you know, eBay has been in business for 25 years. They... I mean, you're like, there are a million item specifics because they know we need them. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to fill look, them all in. 
I'm not going to forgive eBay for being clunky sure. because we know it is. Yeah. And eBay should always try and be easier and maybe they can see what is working on other platforms. I get that. But I just want to remind people that a site like Poshmark, I mean, why don't we see you whenever they get bought out yeah. or when they go public? Let's see if it stays as easy, you know, yeah. because and until then, take advantage of these companies while you can, yeah, because, if, because if they're getting subsidized and the shipping's like stupid cheap because yeah. the company doesn't need to make a profit. They're just trying to get people to ship stuff. I mean, yeah. like take advantage yeah, of that. Go for it. But I would be very hesitant to build my business on a on a company like that. Yeah. Because then at some point they're going to switch. And shipping is going to get more expensive, and it's going to get a little more complicated to uh, you well, know, put stuff up. Either you know. they go public, or they get bought by Facebook, so or whoever. Yeah, and then and then stuff changes. So. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, anyway, that was like a conversation we had online. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go to the questions or comments that people sent in this week. Okay, you can email us a comment, an audio file from your phone. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com, or you can call our voicemail. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Hey, guys. Uh, my name's Christina. I'm an Asheville drifter, and I am planning to move to Norway in the next year or two. And... I've been looking into it, and apparently Norway does not have an eBay. I think you might have access to, like, UK eBay, but they don't have their own. Um, they don't have Amazon. It's the same thing. You also have you've access to UK Amazon, um, but you don't have direct access to it. And it looks like the only reselling opportunity there are a couple of clothing apps. Um, that I've never heard of before, and Send.No, which is kind of like a giant Craigslist, sort of. Um, I just don't really know what I'm going to do, and I know you guys have traveled in Scandinavia, um, and I'm just wondering what you would do if you were going to move to Norway with limited opportunities like that. Uh, really trying to brainstorm some some solutions. And I want to have it figured out before I get there. Anyway, uh, love your podcast as always. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay, so this a woman is moving to Norway, to Norway. which yeah. is very awesome. I love Norway! Yeah, we didn't spend a whole lot, lot of time there, maybe 10 days or something. I think it's an amazing country. It was very cool. But yes, I mean, like we were talking about earlier, we can do our business, we can run this eBay business in the United States of America because there is so much junk here in a place like Norway. I mean, we didn't do a lot of scavenging, but just being there, I didn't see much. I didn't even know where we would scavenge. I just think there's a different mentality with stuff. Yeah, they're like, we don't waste anything. Which is great. Why would we do that? Uh, But, I mean, that's not to say... There isn't a way. I mean, people yeah. must buy and sell things. Uh, you would just have to dive in. I know there's a woman on our forum, um, Sonia. She lives in Portugal. Right. And she sells on Etsy. Mm. She And she will buy stuff like little antiques, like I guess European antiques. Yeah, cool. Um, and sell them to people in America yeah. on Etsy. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm sure in Norway you'll be able to find uh, antique places. And I'm sure there are like, when we were in the Netherlands, they would have like little, uh, what do you call them? Like markets, like right. antique markets. Yeah, like flea markets. Yeah, like yeah. a flea market. Um so I'm sure Norway has stuff like that. And I'm thinking what you do is use the U.S. eBay site and say you're shipping right. from Norway. So find the stuff that people in Norway don't really care about. But in the U.S. are like, someone in wow. America. And, you know, the Norwegians are like all the rage right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. it's a hip country. With yeah. Scandinavia their, in Yeah, general. with their coffee and their murder mysteries and all that <laughs> stuff. Uh, well, the other thing, too, is like living in Norway... Uh, I don't know if you're going there for work or you have a partner that has work or whatever, but like 
Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark. Right. They're all so close. Like we drove around there. So maybe right. go over to Sweden and see and, what they have. Uh, and in mid-century modern oh stuff my was God. a lot of the best designers were from Scandinavia. So I mean, if you can find that any stuff, of that stuff could be boring over there and would be awesome here. So yeah, I mean, again, the the whole point is to find stuff and and change its context. Right. You know. Like we, we've talked about, we moved to a rural part of America. We go to the thrift stores here. We find these old like work boots yeah. that the farmers are like giving away because they're junk to them. Right. And then we kind of barely clean them up mm-hmm. and we sell them to hipsters in Brooklyn because they want that look, that well-worn boot. And so we just took something and changed its context and gave value to it. So like, do the same thing. Every single person in Norway has like a Norwegian Fair Isle sweater. Yeah. And they're like, of course I have this sweater. It's almost like a national uniform. And over here, people are like, a real Norwegian sweater? Right. That's amazing. <laughs> so anyway. So go uh, find those. Have fun and tell us how it goes. Hello, this is Dennis from Mississippi. Um, I had uh, wondered when I would get my... Uh, email communication from eBay about joining managed payments, and I had not, so I reached out to them through eBay, eBay chat. Uh, it appears that not everyone has a July deadline for managed payments, so my guidance was to just wait, and they would get to me eventually later this year. So, again, thanks for your program. I uh, enjoy it every Monday morning. Bye. Okay, well, that's very interesting. That's good information for anybody out there. I could have sworn I saw some kind of like site-wide communication that said that everyone by the end of July was going to get switched over to managed payments. So I guess that's not true. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Who knows? Yeah. So we just know that we got that a message through eBay that said, you know, join now and this is your deadline. So maybe that was just a deadline for our group. Maybe they're doing it by tiers. Maybe it's like people who have store subscriptions or people who have these level of store subscriptions. And then they're just going to like do the different tiers. Who knows? We're just the plebes at the bottom of the mountain <laughs> being thrown crumbs right. <laughs> of grain and sand. Uh, so, yeah, there we have gotten some emails from people who have been very worried about this. You know, it's one of those things on eBay, big changes, and is it going to be good or bad? It seems, I mean, it's not it's, seems. It is inevitable. You can't stop it. We're trying to put ourselves in the best position for it. And from what we've learned, if it's going to be like Amazon... Where you get your money, they take out all the fees, and then they just give you the profit. Fine. I I don't know. I think it's fine if it means that people can pay by any way they want instead of just just PayPal. PayPal. I think that's fine, too. I think it's fine. So um, we'll see. We're we're cautiously optimistic, but we we don't really have a choice anyway, so keep doing it. That's it for today. You can check out uh, our site that we talk about, scavengerlife.com slash forum. Uh, you, you can join. You just have to join, then send us an email and say you did so we can approve you because we get a lot of spam. So much spam. Bots attempts. Trying to get in. But the good news is our forum is spam free. But that's just yes. because we have a bit of a gatekeeper. Uh, anyone can join. Uh, you can call her and leave a question or comment on her voicemail line. The phone number, again, is 540-407-8486. Yeah, I mean, ask us a question. We're not experts, but we'll we'll act like it. And Or we'll if you want to share some experience or story with other people out there, we, we enjoy that too. Uh, Wednesdays, we post a What Sold video from our friend Steve Schultz. Yes. Uh, and again, that's a good place for people who are new. He shows you... In video, cool things he buys and how much people pay for it. Always interesting to learn. Um, You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube or Spotify. um, Or wherever. So we show up every week in in whatever podcatcher you use. (laughs) Um, Okay, this podcast is ending in three, Three, two, two, one. one. Bye.